This week, thinking about all the, the horses, donkeys, zebras, all the, all the equids in the world. Looking out my window, I watched a young mare graze against the, the backdrop of the hills and mountains in New Zealand. Her name's Willow. It made me really think about her origins and ancestry and, and tracing back her family line. Did her great, 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 great grandsire or, or damn her, her grandmom way down the line, did they come on a boat when the British settled New Zealand in the 1800s or did one of them come over on a boat crossing the Tasman Sea from Australia? Or was it just recently, you know, on we, we now shuttle horses around the world on airplanes? And then it also made me think about about a decade ago, I was very privileged and very fortunate to be asked to speak at a, a veterinary conference in Egypt, Cairo. And this was back in 2010. Wonderful people, incredible hosts, incredible, incredible history. The pyramids, I was very, very lucky to see and, and touch. The Sphinx, got to walk right by that. And amazing hosts that I'm, I'm friends with today. One of the things that really stuck with me on that trip was driving around Cairo and seeing the horses pulling carts, the donkeys still working. And it just, it did open my eyes that donkeys and horses around the world are still working hard, are still standing side by side us, still helping us plow fields, still helping us travel from point A to point B. And in fact, today we have more horses and donkeys in the world than we have had ever before. And I it just was one of those aha moments that you know, seeing where all these these horses are and these donkeys are in, in the hills of South America, in the deserts of Africa, in the plains of Asia, and then the many arenas in North America and the barns in Europe. And then you look at all the different islands throughout the world and wherever you go, our equid companions are right next to us still. And in this episode, we're going to find out exactly where they are and who they are. And Secretariat being led, he is numbering... The horse. And the horse is the best thing in the world, isn't it? So I suppose one's always... I've always loved them, really. Ever since I was a little girl. Everybody's in line, and they're off. The Secretariat away very well has good position... The love... Oh, I never thought owning a horse could mean so much to me. The madness. What kind of a horse is that? I've never seen a horse like that before. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Their story. Mustang is more involved in the, in the early development of this breed than I thought they were, but they were. Welcome to Mad About Horses. The horse industry, the donkey industry, is still a very much part of many nations, almost every nation on Earth's economy. And in this episode, we're gonna we're gonna look at who they are, where they are, what they do, why there's so many domestic horses and donkeys. And then at the end, we'll, we'll look at our wild equids again and just give you a brief glimpse into to where they are and, and what's going on with them. And like I said in the beginning, it, it, it is such a big impact on the economies of each and every country. And, and, and the data we have comes a lot from our, our Western society. So in the United States alone, this is the country with the greatest population of horses Estimates of over 10 million just horses, and we'll talk about donkeys and mules in a little bit. They have, as an industry, $122 billion 
dollars, United States dollars per year. That is a massive impact on an economy of a major industrialized nation. Then out of the 330 million plus citizens, 1.7 million work in the horse industry alone. 2 million. So this audience should be over 2 million and we're going to get there with this podcast, but it just shows you how important the horse industry is to just the United States. And then you can carry this from country to country as we talk about these statistics and the population of horses and then donkeys. It has major impacts on today's livelihood of many people. So we've been talking about the history of horses these last few podcasts and how critical they've been in our evolutionary development, our our history, our own genealogy, our genetics, our languages, our cultures throughout the world. Our equid friends have impacted us so much and they still are today. And it and it blows our minds because we think, oh, we have automobiles now, we travel by airplanes, we 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 do this and that to get around bicycles. Now we have electric scooters and electric bicycles and all that. That's wonderful. But our equid friends and companions are still with us every day throughout the world. Now when I talked about going to Egypt, it it was a it was very impressionable to me. In my career, I was a professor at the University of Florida. I know horses inside, literally, uh, research and 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 out. But I didn't quite appreciate the impact our equid companions were still having on cultures throughout the world. And and I was very lucky to travel. And 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 I encourage anybody that can. Uh, pinch pennies, uh, however you can, save money, go see the world. I know I live in New Zealand today, and I see horses wherever I go and donkeys. But, you know, growing up in the United States, I, I just, you know, go outside those borders wherever you live in the world and and experience different cultures, different foods, different peoples. It really gives you an eye-opening view of the world, but then you look around and you see the horses and donkeys and mules, and it just warms your heart. And one of the things, you know, to kind of tie this up with with economic impact, the United Nations monitors the world and, and developing nations, and one of the things was the impacts of donkeys. Again, an appreciation I didn't quite have until I'd made that trip. And really started looking into the the contribution donkeys have to the world and looking up statistics through the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, who 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 compiles all this data, and I'm going to share that here in a minute. But they they had a a page on donkeys, and the title was Healthier Donkeys to Bring Stronger Livelihoods in Africa. Now, real quick. There are over 50 million donkeys in the world, and we're going to break this down to where they are. But in Africa, there's, there's over 13 million. So to quote them, quote, with donkey population estimated at 13.7 million heads in sub-Saharan Africa, they are deeply involved in people's economic activities through farming and transporting goods and people. The revenues generated by using donkeys are primarily used to access food, healthcare, and education for children. In urban areas, the use of equines not only provides regular employment and income for some households, but also offers an opportunity for rural people to generate additional income in the dry season by allowing them to support the family left in the village. End of the quote. That is going on around the world. That's just sub-Sahara Africa. In still parts of Europe, Asia, South America, North America, donkeys and horses are still having those impacts. So those, I I said 1.7 million people working in the equine industry, just in the United States, that's used to access food, healthcare, and education for, for our children. So they are still that important to us, you know, as we look at them today. 
Now, to jump into some of the statistics, the world population of the equids, and I said there are more equids today than there ever has been in history. We have over 60 million horses in the world. They're on every continent except Antarctica and through the thousands of islands around the world. So Fiji is near me, beautiful country, beautiful people. Just Fiji. If, if anybody, if you can get there, please get there. It's, it's, it's a wonderful place to visit. They have almost 50,000 horses just on Fiji, and it's not that big of an island. I mean, it's a bigger island. It's comparable to the Hawaiian Islands like Oahu. There's, that's a lot of horses, and they are very much a part of everyday life there. When we look at donkeys, there's over 50 million donkeys in the world, again, on every continent, a lot of islands, except Antarctica. And then there's over 8 million mules, and that's a horse-donkey hybrid. So that is, you're looking at close to over 120 million domestic equids around the world. And like I said, the FAO is who puts this data together. Government agencies estimate the number of animals they have in, in their countries. And uh, some countries don't report. So, you know, they, the FAO still tries to assume how many are in there. Uh, using some algorithms or mathematical equations that, that I'm not privy to, but generally the countries will report how many horses are in their country, how many donkeys, and then the FAO puts these statistics out mainly yearly or, or try to. Now, with that being said, I, I do want to put a disclaimer because I, I the data isn't that precise or that accurate. I in my opinion, I really believe we're underestimating the number of equids we have, and that is because they use a lot of registry numbers. We're going to talk about breeds here pretty soon. A registered horse is one that's that's registered with the breed association, and then we have grade horses that aren't registered. Most horses are probably unregistered, so the FAO tries to estimate how many there are but I believe they underestimate, and, and I think that's fine. That means there's more horses out there. Just as an example, in New Zealand, they estimate we only have 40,000 horses. My friends here that do work in the horse industry say that number is way low. We are, we're closer to probably 200,000. And 200,000 equids is what they say they have in Australia, but Australia actually has over a million horses. Actually, Australia has the largest wild horse population in the world. I believe that's true. Uh, if anybody can fact check me, just email me and let me know. But there's an estimate over 400,000 wild horses in the outback in Australia. Uh, many of them escaped in the 1800s and they've been in surviving since. Also, I did not know this while we're on the topic of Australia. Massive wild donkey population estimated to be over 4 million. It's incredible. They, and they actually have wild camels there too. So Australia has, a, has all everything you ever wanted to see in the world uh, with wildlife and animals. But donkeys are able to survive in that harsh, arid environment where horses have a little bit more difficult time. So that's why their, their wild donkey population has really boomed. So the numbers coming from the FAO, in my opinion, are probably underestimated, and we probably have a lot more equids than what they're reporting. But the data is still very interesting, shows trends, shows where a lot of our, our horses are, and donkeys are living. One of the questions you may have is, okay, where are all these horses? And, and I'm going to break it down by continents, and then we'll look at some of the top countries in there with some special mentions. Now, in 2020, the latest statistics I could get, in the world, the FAO, the UN, says there's 59,998,177 horses in the world. That is 60 million. Rounded up, pretty close. And, and we're probably way over that. 60 million. That is insane. Now, I, I say... Uh, there's more equids today than there was in 1900. We don't, we don't have statistics back then, but we're just assuming the world human population is close, closing in on 8 billion. 
And with that, in, in much of the developing world, horses and donkeys are still a big part of their economy. So when we say 60 million, we don't have exact statistics of how many horses there were 100 years ago. Just assuming that the developing world, horses have become more of a commodity, and so there's more of them today in different parts of the world. And I'm going to break this down now. The biggest population of horses is in Asia, which makes sense. That's the largest continent. And it's estimated that there's over 14 million horses in Asia. The next biggest is South America. So Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, all of these South American countries, horses are, are a big part of their culture. Uh, they Polo is massive in Argentina. And then also part of not just working animals, but pleasure riding. A lot of our gated horses, when we get to breeds, we'll talk about that. These are the horses that some people might think they walk funny. They're just special gates. They're, they're beautiful, fun to ride. Uh, a lot of those gated horses are coming from South America. And then the next biggest is North America, 10.9 million, almost 11 million. Latin America and the Caribbean, so this will include Mexico because Mexico's got a massive horse population, close to 9 million. Then Africa at 7.3 million horses, Europe with just over 5 million. And then you look at Oceania, close to half a million. So that, that is what, where we get our over 60 million uh, horses. The other interesting aspect of some of this data that they, they put out is the density of horses per 1,000 people. So that tells you a little bit. It could tell you, like, for example, in Latin America, in the Caribbean, Per 1,000 people, there are close to 47 horses. Now, 100 years ago in the United States, so when we needed horses to travel, to work the farm, this is really before automobiles took off uh, in the 1930s and 40s and onward, horses were only 12.5 per 1,000 people. But today we see in Latin America close to 46. In North America, that's close to 29 so there's actually more horses per 1,000 people than there were 100 years ago. So this is why we can say that there's probably more horses today than there were 100 years ago. So there's where your, your two densest areas is really in North America and Latin America, which is a big part of Mexico. Then when we go to Oceania, so like I was talking about Fiji and, and some of these other smaller countries, 11 horses per 1,000 people. When we look at Asia, it's only 3.7, Africa, 4.6 horses per 1,000, Europe's only nine per 1,000 people, and then how could I forget South America down there, uh, 41 horses per 1,000 people. So that shows you there's, there's more horses today per 1,000 people more likely than there were 100 years ago or close to it. When you look at the horse density map, uh, again, the UN puts this out, so it's really, it's really interesting to look at the, the red heat map of, of where a lot of these horses are. So when you do look at it, uh, I see spots of Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, around Mexico City, in the United States and Texas, around Fort Worth, Dallas area, Kentucky, Florida, Ocala, my old neck of the woods. Then when you look across the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, this country is going to surprise you at every turn, Ethiopia. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. And then you just have this huge, densely populated horses in Mongolia. And, and it, it's, just, it's interesting to see where these horses are living, and that's what that map is, is looking at. Now, when we break it down by countries around the world, where these horses are, the, the USA is number one. The FAO says there's about 10.5 million horses in the United States. So that's the largest population of horses for any country. Now, this differs a little bit from the American Horse Council's report of a few years ago that was estimating there was about 7.5 million, close to 7.5 million horses. And so there's a discrepancy there. Where are those 3 million horses? Well, like I said, 
so a lot of this data can only be gathered from breed registries. And I, I'm not privy to the American Horse Council, how they came up with their statistics. Uh, the UN, we, I know the horse population in the US in my career has gone from 9 to 10 million in that range. People underreport. Uh, some people don't want to report their animals or they're not surveyed. So, like I said, I think a lot of these numbers are actually underestimating the, the total number of horses. Now, if we look at our neighbor, neighbor to the north of the United States, Canada, the UN reports about 400,000. But my friends there say it's high as 500,000 plus. So again, more horses out there than we're seeing. What is interesting from the American Horse Council report on the horse industry in the United States, and this again, it kind of shows you, I would think you would see some of this similarly in South American countries, European countries down here in Australia and New Zealand, most of the horses in the United States are used for recreation riding. So out of the 7.5 million or 7.2 million that they report, over 3 million are for recreation riding, backyard trail riding, general, this is my, my pet, this is part of my family, uh, I ride my horse occasionally. And, and that's why many of us, many of us that, that own horses, that's what we do. Then there's a, there's a big over a million, 1.2 million people show their horses in the United States. So they're the ones getting in the trailers <laughs> during the week. You see them up and down the highways. Uh, they're, they're going to shows in all sorts of different disciplines, which we'll cover in a, in a future podcast, but eventing, show jumping. Uh, you've got halter horses, reining, cutting horses, all sorts of different disciplines that people ride. And, you know, even polo competing. Uh, the racing industry in the United States is still very strong with 1.2 million. And that's not just your thoroughbreds, even though that's a, a big, big driver. But you do have quarter horse racing. You, you have standard bred racing. You have actually mule racing. Whenever we do talk about the clones and, and Idaho, Jem and Joe and all the, the first clones, uh, those mules that were cloned, the first equids. We're actually racing mules. Very interesting story. And, and my friends were, were part of that project. So I can't wait till we get to talk about that one day. Uh, and then over half a million horses are working in the United States. So, you know, some of them, are they plowing fields? Not as much as 100 years ago. Uh, I have seen mules still in, in logging, in the logging industry. There are still a lot of horses that work on ranches. Uh, Yellowstone's been a very popular show there in the United States that there are ranchers riding horses all the time. So a lot of these horses down in Texas and, and other parts of the country in the United States are working horses. Now, where they are individually in states, uh, Texas has the largest population with over 700,000, followed by California, over 500,000, and then Florida has about close to 400,000. So the, the industry is strong. The, indus the horse industry is strong in the United States, and it's strong around the world. The neighbor to the south, when we look at Mexico, they are the second largest country in the world with horses with 6.4 6 million. It is a huge part of their culture. The vaquero, the Mexican cowboy, still very popular. Uh, they, the horses were reintroduced to Latin America in the 1500s by the Spanish, and, and those are where our, our wild horses in North America come from, getting, escaping from them. Uh, just a, a huge part of their culture. And then, like I said, when you go down to South America, over 13 million just on that continent alone, and a little less than half live in Brazil with 6 million, Argentina with 2.5 million, and Colombia with 1.5 million. Just a part of the world that, that I want to get down to one day in, in Patagonia and, and, and to see the, the Argentinians ride. It, it just will be a thrill one day to, to be able to do that. I hope I can. Now, if we go across the Pacific to Asia, if we're going west, uh, we've already talked about Australia and New Zealand. Asia, 14 million horses, a lot. China is the biggest country with 6 million, followed by Mongolia with 4 million. Then if you go to Kazakhstan, and, and this was when we were talking about domestication of the horse, the Bowtie peoples lived. 
uh, 3.7 million horses, so quite a bit. Then Russia, you go, you have about 1.3 million large population. You would assume they'd have a lot of horses. When you look at, it's interesting, when you look at uh, Vietnam, 50,000 horses, Thailand, only 6,000 horses. I have, I have yet to be that part of the world, but you have dense jungle, it's hot, it's humid. Horses probably don't do as well there, but there are horses there living next to people. Asia's massive, but if we go all the way to Southwest Asia, or, or what some people call the Middle East, rich culture and Arab horses and racing industry and some of the top stallions in the world are there and, and some of the top breeders are there. Saudi Arabia has about 32,000 horses. Uh, Qatar or Gutter uh, has 11,000. So not a massive population, but they are very much a part of their culture. Now, if we go south to Africa, over 7.3 million horses, Egypt, which I opened up with talking about, only has 85,000, but still a big part of their country. I saw working animals in Cairo. Uh, my friends there are doing research in horses. And if you look around, you go really to the western central part of Africa, Senegal, 600,000, Sierra Leone, 450,000. Big part of their their culture there and, and, and horses uh, being bred there. You go down to South Africa, which is where you would think there would be a lot of horses, but only 325,000. I mean, still a healthy population, but not as much as some of the others. And then, like I just talked about, Ethiopia has 2.2 million horses. I need to get to Ethiopia one day. It, it, they have so many horses and donkeys. We'll, we'll talk about donkeys here in a minute. That's massive. That's a massive population for one country in Africa. So very much part of their culture, very much part of their economy, these, these equids uh, down in Africa. Now, when we go to Europe, I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised, and I always was when I looked at this data, that there's only 5 million horses. And it, 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 is be, it is surprising to me because Europe has such a rich culture with horses. Most of our breeds or a lot of our breeds were developed there. They were a big part of raiding out in the world with the British Empire and, and colonialism and, and I don't want to talk about the dark history there, but they were instrumental in moving horses around the world. So like when I talk about New Zealand, Australia, they came because of the British Empire. So it's surprising to me that, that there's only about 5 million horses there. Now, where they are, Germany probably has the highest population with over a million, followed by the United Kingdom right behind them, which you would expect. The Netherlands, I was very fortunate to go to a conference there uh, many years ago, uh, about 400,000 beautiful horses. Uh, France is right up there too with 452,000. And then uh, throughout Europe, I mean, every country, Spain, 350,000. Spain's been huge in you know, introducing horses to the Americas or reintroducing horses after they went extinct. Uh, so uh, Spain, we have to recognize 350,000 horses. Now, in a future podcast, we're going to talk about breeds, but there's more th over 570 horse breeds. And what that means is you think thoroughbreds, quarter horses, Arabians, some of our more popular breeds in, in, in certain countries. But then you think of the big ones, the draft breeds, the, the Clydesdales, Budweiser Clydesdales are world famous, Shire horses, Belgium horses. And then we go down to our little pony breeds, our Shetland pony, Welsh ponies. Uh, well, we'll talk more about breeds here in the future, but v tons of different breeds around the world. So in Africa, they have their own breeds. In Asia, they have their own breeds. And, and we'll talk about that. Also applies to donkeys. Uh, donkeys have more than 30 breeds. You have the Irish donkey, uh, the Andalusian donkey, the American mammoth donkey. So we will talk about that here very soon. Okay, let's get to our donkeys. And donkeys are a little bit more difficult because, again, you could see there was 570 horse breeds we can pull data from. 
only 30 really well-known donkey breeds and they don't really have a breed registry everywhere in the world like you do with horses. There is a good study uh, by Norris and others out of the United Kingdom uh, that was published uh, just a couple years ago in 2021. Uh, Global donkey and mule populations, figures and trends. Uh, The authors pulled data from the FAO uh, UN database and analyzed it. They reckon, you know, they recognize that because there's not many breed registries, things like that, it's difficult to assess. But what we do know is this might surprise you. Donkey populations have risen by 20% over the last 20 years. 20% increase in global population to now over 50 million. That's incredible. Now, where are the donkeys? If we just start around the world in North America, 4 million, South America, 3 million, Europe, 500,000, Asia, 20 million, Africa, 24 million. So when I go back to that quote earlier, donkeys are critical to the livelihood of many peoples around the world. And you're seeing this huge surge in uh, donkey population. If we look around the world, Ethiopia, again, remember 2.2 million horses, has an estimated population of donkeys of 8.5 million. Ethiopia is an equid hotbed. Again, I need to get over there at some point in my life. That is incredible. 8.5 million donkeys live in Ethiopia. Uh, Sudan, near Ethiopia, has 7.6 million. Chad, again, in sub-Saharan Africa, 3 million. Then you go China. China had a, 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 China was the global leader 20 years ago with 9.5 million donkeys, but now they're down to 2.7 million. So you can see where industrialization has really, uh, you know, with probably tractors and other things has displaced donkeys as working animals in China, but still very large population there. Uh, Burkina Faso, so West Africa, 1.7 million. And then when you look at countries like Greece, you know, going around the world, uh, 77,000 20 years ago, they're down to only 8,500. Again, industrialization, uh, donkeys being replaced by machinery, most likely, like Bulgaria in Eastern Europe. Had a population of 286,000 donkeys down to 19,000. And then the U.S. estimates there's about 52,000 donkeys in there as as mostly companion animals, but also working animals too. So that gives us a picture of donkeys. But again, we don't have a breakdown as much, but still a massive, massive surge uh, in many parts of the world where donkeys are so important to the peoples. And and even in the U.S., those 52,000 donkeys are important to the people. I I just did a social media post the other day with Benito, and he's a mini donkey, and and he's loved and and spoiled rotten. He is very much part of the family, so donkeys are very important. Now, just quick with mules, uh, over 8 million, but there's probably more. Again, there isn't a mule registry per se around the world. This is just an estimate. Uh, The U.S., the the FAO only estimates 28,000 mules. I, I... I've seen estimates of up to over 200,000 mules in the United States. There's many of them. Uh, one of my good friends in graduate school, her father was a mule breeder in Texas. Uh, they're very popular and the, they still are working animals, but also just as, as companions. China has the largest mule population at 811,000. So again, very much working uh, animals. I'm going to let you guess for a second. Pause here. Take a breath. Okay. Who would you guess has the next population of mules in the world? If you said Ethiopia, you are right. 340,000. So Ethiopia, probably behind the United States, has the most equids on the planet. That is incredible. Uh, Peru, uh, 300,000, over 300,000. Colombia, 222,000. Pakistan and Iran, just under 200,000 mules. Okay, so that gives you an idea of where all of our domestic equids are. Now, if we go to our wilds, I did talk about this in 
the previous podcast talking about the Cabaline lines, the non Cabaline lines, just to remind you the wild equids, the true wild equids. In the Cabaline lines, we have our Przewalski horses. They, again, a, a incredible story, and maybe just they deserve their own podcast, how we saved this species. They were down to 12 breeding animals uh, held throughout the zoos and conservation centers around the world. They came together and said, we're going to save this species and came up with a very detailed breeding plan where today there's over 2,500 in individuals, over close to 1,400 are living in the wild in Mongolia and China. So one of conservation's greatest success stories is the Przewalski horse. It, it's up there with the California condor and, and some other uh, species that were on the brink uh, that we've saved them. So the beautiful Przewalski horse is still with us and doing well. Now, our non cabalines we had the zebras and the three remaining species, the grevies. They're endangered with 2,500 living in East Africa. So they're found in Ethiopia and Kenya. The plain zebra, uh, there's about a million of them left, which is good. Uh, they are near threatened, so we have to watch them carefully. Uh, but you find them, Ethiopia, Kenya, all the way down the east, eastern parts of Africa, central parts of Africa, down to South Africa. So uh, lots of plain zebras. Then the mountain zebras, these are vulnerable to extinction in Namibia with about 35,000. And can't forget our, our wild asses and my favorites, one of my favorites, the Somali wild ass. It's the original donkeys because the Nubian wild ass and the Atlas wild ass that were all in North Africa are extinct. So the Somali wild ass is critically endangered, maybe, you know, maybe a few hundred left, uh, estimates as high as 700 in Somalia and Etria. So that's where they're remaining. And then many of them are held in conservation centers and zoos throughout the world. The Asiatic wild ass, your onagers, they are 55,000, range from Mongolia down to India. And then the Kulon that's endangered that live in Turkmenistan with maybe 1,300 left. So that is a snapshot of all the equids in the world. Even though the numbers may not be 100% accurate, they do give some exciting data. Uh, like I said, there's, there's probably more domestic horses, donkeys, and mules ever today than there ever have been in our history. And they're, they're still a very much a big part of our lives. So as we end this, when you drive by and see a horse, see a donkey, see a mule, see a zebra, wherever it is, always wonder what their ancestors must have done to get to wherever you are in the world listening to this, whether it was South America, Africa, Asia, North America, down in Australia, New Zealand. That animal has a story to tell. In its history, its ancestors traveled wide and far. And it just gives you that much more appreciation for them. Thank you for listening. Wow, another long episode. I can talk horses all day. And I, I hope you enjoyed that on uh, where our world's equids are. And, and soon we're going to be jumping into some breeds and then we'll start jumping to some general physiology and, and sprinkle in some fun stuff. If you have any suggestions for topics for a future podcast, please email me podcast at madbarn.com. Just, uh, you can give me some feedback. If, if any, any of my data is wrong or I, I miss say something or you notice anything, please feel free to shoot me an email. Um, you know, and I'll, and I'll correct myself. No problem. I really try to do my best to, to dig as much research as I can to present the most factual data as I can. Again, check out madbarn.com. If you haven't, uh, over 400 articles on, I, we just did one on uh, estrus manipulation, advanced reproductive techniques. We're doing breed guides, feeding guides, uh, you name it, there's probably an article out there at, from Mad Barn, uh, really building up this depository of knowledge. And again, stay tuned for some exciting stuff we, we've got in development. 
Also, please don't forget to follow us on social media. This week, I'll be dropping some pictures for my trips in Egypt. And you can find us on Instagram, Mad Barn, Facebook at Mad Barn. But I just want to thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't, if you could just subscribe, whatever podcast app you're listening on, or go into iTunes or Spotify and just subscribe to the show. We're pushing out as much content as we can uh, to develop a library and hopefully some of these topics you find as fascinating as I do. So stay tuned for another exciting episode coming your way very soon.